Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, okay, so um, let me just move on to the first slide. So, who we are. My name is Jason Norton. I am the Head of Virtual Learning Environments at University College London and the Moodle product owner. Sorry. Um, Alistair Spark, my, our Moodle technical lead and service operations manager. And Aurea Soulier, who is, was our learning technologist, recently at UCL, and has now moved on to better and greater things. <laughs> <laughs> so just a little bit about UCL. Um, UCL is made up of 11 academic faculties. Um, we are the largest campus-based university in the UK now. Um, we are second um, largest university by total enrollment, with only the Open University being larger. And we have the, the largest postgraduate enrollment in the UK as well. Um, I, I put this up because UCL is an institution that politely acquires other institutions. It grows by taking over other universities and spreads through, has spread through North London. And this has led to a very unique situation about how our faculties work together. The multidisciplinary and recently polycentric is the word that we are using at the moment. So this is very important for where I'm going. Um, our Moodle is big. Um, we, ha we have, on average, you know, 50,000 unique users a day, 140,000 sessions every day, and it's grown substantially. Um, as I said, our, our student numbers are now around 49,000. So there's, there's, it's a big Moodle for the UK. Um, and this has left us, as we've grown, with some quite serious problems. Um, we've been very traditional. Um, Pre-2018, we had one production Moodle, which was on-premise. But every year, we would take a snapshot, which would become our permanent record of that Moodle. And we'd freeze it and say, right, here's a snapshot, bang, frozen. And that's the record. And I know a lot of other institutions do this. But we also have to comply with data regulations. And our faculty say, well, we want our students to be able to go back and look at their courses. So we want you to maintain those moves. And we got to a point where we were having seven years of snapshots going back. And we are having to maintain all of those snapshots and the versions of Moodle and keep them upgraded. And it just kept the, our small team exceptionally busy. And it also made a, a bad experience for our students because say you're a third year student and you want to go look at your first year course, you, which Moodle am I on? I'm going to go back to that Moodle and find my course and has it been hidden? And we can't search. So there's a lot of complexities to this. Well, the key drivers for that was retention of the information and keeping the, the, the student journey complete. Now, it then changed again in 2018 because the institution de um, decided to move in a process called our late summer assessment program. So this is where students, for whatever reason, have failed to complete their course but need to continue into the summer to do reassessments, new essays, whatever, and they still need access to those courses that we were snapshotting. So we're going, well, hang on, we've gone from a period where we had one Moodle, then we would snapshot, and pretty much the snapshot was where people were going, look, you can't go and work there. But now we had, oh, hang on, we've now got to make that snapshot available for them to work in for a period of four months. So we were then maintaining two production Moodles simultaneously, and then snapshotting that, and basically making that second one read only at the end of November. That's created a lot of difficulty, especially over the summer period. We, ha we worked with Catalyst to build a, a hub page so um, the students would land on one page and go, which Moodle am I going to go to? Am I, am I a postgraduate? Am, am I a, a late summer assessment student? Where am I going? It created a lot of confusion for students and for our staff. But we still had these underlying principles of data retention, and late summer assessment support, and keeping the student materials together. So that's where we were. And what we realized when we sat down and looked at this is that the idea of an academic year for us does not exist. We have so many different academic processes, different groups of students, different faculties, medical schools, um, undergraduate, postgraduate, all the courses starting this at different points, multi-cohorts coming in. And we go, well, how can we free keep freezing this? How can we keep having one mood and then shelving these things off to the side? And we said, well, we can't. We just simply can't. So in late 2019, 2020, myself and Alistair sort of sat down and went, well, how are we going to de deal with this? We need to remove snapshots somehow. 
we need to move to a single instance of Moodle. Makes sense. You know, the, the idea of past, in progress, future should have some real meaning, whereas at the moment, everything's in pretty much in progress. So we also wanted to empower tutors and have one environment, we wanted to make use of things like global search across all courses, and we wanted to automate all these processes where we could. And then obviously, 2020. Our plans go out the window, everything that we wanted to do, COVID. The, the whole focus was reshifted to making sure the institution survived for the period, everything shifting online, massive changes. We moved our Moodle to the cloud to support it. We partnered with Catalyst IT and we did a whole load of work. So all that work, we basically had to forget. But time moves on, 2021, 22. We suddenly went, well, we're gonna do this. So, and our institution was bringing in agile and a much more stronger product focus. We established our own development team and we worked um, in partnership um, with Catalyst IT to design what we call the, the course life cycle tool, or CLC for short. Um, and it's been a really productive partnership with Catalyst because the way we worked, one of the key things that we worked is that we didn't just go, oh, here's some development we want you to do, Catalyst, come back later. We actually partnered with Catalyst internally and one of the developers joined our development team and literally worked hand in hand, day by day, to develop what we wanted. And this was, the key things was, we, moved, yeah, we got rid of course um, resets, we connected to our student information system and built the category structure in our Moodle based on what our student information system was doing, and we built a course rollover tool. So I'm just gonna hand over to Ori to talk about the, our date manager. So just before the course rollover tool was created, uh, because we needed it for the previous academic year effectively. Uh, we worked with Catalyst and they amended the OU date manager plugin um, to provide the ability to amend dates and names of the Moodle activities that have dates, so anything date sensitive, such as your forums, database, lessons, etc., in one page. So the idea, and I'll show you in a minute uh, when we go in demonstration, is you have a report, you open that report, so you've got all your activities in one place, especially all your assignments, etc., and you go and amend uh, the title if, if it's date sensitive, amend the date, make, you can make a date available or unavailable as well. And the brilliant thing, which I love, is that at the bottom of the page, you get a timeline of all your activity dates so you can see where they fit in in your, in your course. <laughs> Clearly rehearsed this. Um, yeah, so uh, I guess that coming back to that timeline, we, we implemented the date manager in that summer because we only had so much capacity to get things done for that for that summer. But we then need, needed to prepare for the following academic year. And the first first building block for, for this whole suite of, of tools was to create the category structure in Moodle based on our... Uh, department, fa faculties, departments, and entities which are recorded in SITS. Uh, so uh, one of our developers, um, Shagan, who's in the room over there, um, actually built that integration to generate the category structure in Moodle. And that way we would do that every academic year so we can reflect the changing and evolving and absorbing, uh, <laughs> evolving nature of UCL. Um, and keep that current for, for, the, for that specific academic year. Um, yeah. Then the next step from uh, that was to look at the rollover. So the idea being you can do a course backup, you can do a course copy. We wanted to do, uh, and you can do a backup, restore. Core Moodle has a course copy. But our rollover does the copy, but it does a lot of suggesting in terms of where the course should go in that category, in terms of that category structure, what it should be called, uh, looking at the SIT data uh, for the specific um, modules that are uh, mapped for, for that course, um, and providing the course end dates, start dates, and allowing that timeline on the, on the dashboard to then be populated and um, accurate. Um, so um, let's go back 
uh, step. This is a, a course, a module, a module in in our Moodle. Uh, so this is actually I'm showing you uh, in the what we call demo environment, which is where we've done um, a lot of our training and and testing uh, for for the course role of a tool. It's a little bit slower than you than than the normal Moodle, so we've prepared. Uh, some things. So what you would do typically on the module, you just click uh, in the settings or course administration block uh, and then course rollover. And then it will take you to this beautiful page, uh, which has the uh, two steps. So the first step is the alignment. And uh, in here, we select what kind of alignment we want for our course. So module, program, or miscellaneous. Uh, so these are the different types of category that we have in um, in Moodle. So once we select that, automatically the tool will know which category type it will go in for that student record um, um, delivery, basically. Um, and then the, the next bit looks at whatever was there last year. So in the last module, um, 2021, I've, I've got some uh, mapping or alignments to um, the student record systems for enrollments. And if they don't use a student record system for enrollments, um, they can just search for a, um, a, a module delivery code in the student's record system with a search box, and it will then suggest it here. So it suggests automatically the next academic year in this case, or they can, if there's no data because they use manual enrollments or the enrollments plugin, um, they can just search for it in here. It won't work without the student's record system data because it needs all of that to create the next page. So basically, I would just click module and next on this page. That's all I have to do as a, as a, as a tutor or course administrator. And then on the next page, it will suggest my current course data. I can change dates because these are the ones pulled from the student record system. And you see I've got late summer assessment that has been mentioned earlier. I can just extend it to later in the year um, if I want it to be um, um, kind of in the in progress uh, area of Moodle for longer. And then I have a suggested uh, name conven naming convention, which we suggest they don't change, obviously. Um, and, uh, and that's automatically su suggested from the student's record system. And so are the start and end date of the module and the category. In this case, because I've chosen module, it just goes straight to the course kind of category. And then I just click schedule rollover and it will um, send me, um, it will schedule that rollover, pick it up the next instance, and then uh, um, I just get an email when it's ready, and I can just go and amend my course as an academic or uh, as a course administrator. And I can just return to my course at any point. I can go and check. Um, this is a little bit slow, that's all. I can go and check uh, the status. Um, by just going in the course rollover, which is also useful for other teams. So if there's a team member that's done a rollover and somebody else is trying to do it, they know that somebody else has tried, they don't repeat it and do multiple copies. Uh, so they can see that here, I can see it's currently pending and there's different statuses. If it failed, uh, we would know, because we had a report built as well as part of the work of Catalyst IT and our developers. And from that report, we would monitor and support the, what fa failures there were. And there's one, we fix them and tell the users, but also where they were common failures, we would actually kind of patch that effectively in the next incremental release of the tool, re release the fix for it. Uh, so we were trying to be as proactive as possible in incrementing the tool uh, uh, regularly throughout the, the process. And um, very briefly, once I've got my, I've lost my mouse, that's why. Yay. <laughs> Uh, once I've done my rollover, also these are the category structure, which I failed to show you earlier. But once I've done my rollover, I can also go in reports, which I can't see that far. Okay, I'll just go in there. There, my reports. And then in here, I've got date manager. And as uh, an academic or administrator, I can go and um, review all the dates for my course and update them all for next academic year. And I don't know why it's not working. <laughs> and I keep clicking. Yay. Uh, so what I do here, I tend to do is expand all, so I can see all my activities in one page. I think I clicked on it. 
I can also select specific activities here if I wanted to. So if you want to just change assignments or forum, et cetera, you can actually focus on that or expand all. And then uh, go to the specific activities, change the dates, or make, enable the date if you want to. And then at the bottom of the page, you also have the timeline I mentioned. There are a lot of activities in that course. Not sure about the course design. <laughs> uh, but, uh, oh yeah, not creating, because they were three years plus, okay. Um, but uh, you would get an activity for, for the module that runs within one academic year. You would get a timeline, and then save your changes when everything's ready. Um, and that's it. <laughs> Still me. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's probably worth mentioning that the, the date manager, there's a link to the, that email we mentioned. Um, once the rollover is complete, there's a link to this to this report to edit directly. And the idea is we're relying on the core Moodle processes to do backup and restore, and it's going to shift the dates automatically. But this allows the finer grain, final tweaks to be done. Essentially. Oh yes, I failed to mention that when you do the rollover, if you got assignments in your course, it actually moves the dates based on the assignment, the, start, uh, the module start and end date, so they don't expire. Especially if some of you use um, plagiarism checking plugins of a certain brand. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, so you don't want any classes to expire. Uh, so to, to support staff and uh, um, uh, in, in this process, it was a big change for them because they were used to this snapshot and having to reset things over the summer. And they only had like a really short time period to reset things and things changed quite a lot. The whole process and timeline has changed. So uh, the release of the tool was on the 1st of June, just before a British bank holiday. Um, and we actually started training from the 6th of June, but we had the documentation ready before that. So they, we have a wiki, which is conference wiki, and um, put together different scenarios depending on what they want to do for that. And uh, explaining what the scenarios were, we had a training page and also a, a place where they could see um, known issues so they can self-resolve things or, or don't report an issue that's already known. Um, and uh, so the idea was to support them with this documentation, but also three, um, uh, two or three 30 minute sessions per week. So like st scheduled sessions at different times, different days to allow different people to attend uh, via our teams. Uh, so the staff could just come along, register for those sessions. And uh, we had three trainers, initially me and then two other trainers. And then um, the weekly drop-in session that we allow, again, 30 minutes every Thursday was extremely well attended. We don't, we're not used to our weekly drop-in sessions that well attended. So it was really, good the engagement of staff has been really good for that okay. yep. so just want to talk very quickly about the benefits because this is the start of a journey that we're going to keep moving now um, it's already made a, a better student experience from getting rid of snapshots having a singular Moodle instance things like global search will now as we expand those courses will a student will better look across their entire experience rather than just the one experience of one Moodle and having to jump to another Moodle. The staff experience has improved because it's actually given control to our course teams. They can now roll over the courses and reset the courses when they want, how they want to. Um, which is, whereas previously they had to wait for you know, a master date to occur, for a snapshot to occur, then there's a whole lot of work bunched up to that point or bunched after, so that's all gone. Um, and the actual experience where we used to do course resets and the time that a course reset would take and all the date change thing, that, that could take quite a while. I mean, when I said quite a while, 10 to 15 minutes, say, just to get a course sorted. Now they can do a course rollover in two to five. So there's a, been a substantial course time saving. When we consider that we've got over 6,000 active courses per year, that's a lot of time when you add those figures together. Um, we're also having a, a better alignment with our with SITS, our student information system. That's something we're going to build. And so this is one of the fundamental sort of base blocks that we're, we're moving towards. And obviously, one Moodle. Obviously, we, we have a, a historical archive that will now basically decay and those will be shut off but all of our ongoing instances and years will now be in one Moodle and, and for us that's really critical. Um, yeah and I guess uh, the, 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 the magic kind of probably wasn't obvious but it's that that's that 
piece of relying on that data integration with the student record system to auto-populate everything, which makes staff life easier, was a, a huge, huge amount, amount of work under the, under the hood to enable, uh, but that's what made that tool um, so, so useful. Um, the um, way forward, um, we start, we've implemented bulk rollover uh, at the start of the month. We are working on implementing the read-only functionality that we had in the snapshots within our, our live production Moodle, so we can't be relying on uh, not writing to the database, because that's what we're doing. We're just dropping the, the, the writes previously, which was a nice way to do it at the time, but you can't do that in prod. Um, so we're relying on context freezing, uh, which was implemented in core a few versions ago, and um, our MVP is done, and hopefully going live in um, November. The next stage from that would be auto automating the rollover. So um, potentially sits as we go create the new category structure for the new academic year. If all these alignments that we've had staff enter this year are all good, they could automatically generate most of those without having the human intervention of, of clicking through those screens, which I think might, might uh, benefit, again, staff time. And just generally, we want to um, re reintegrate with SITS uh, and integrate more deeply. So things like faster enrollments from SITS, so we could have you know push uh, enrollment, so in instant enrollment in Moodle, not waiting for an overnight sync process. Um, and our, our SITS is apparently indeed going to the cloud in uh, by Christmas, um, date to be announced. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and so one of the key things that comes with that is that we need to move to an integration model that is API based. Um, and I guess it is one of the points is I, I really think um, it's a shame that there's 400 Moodles with SITS and Moodle, and there's 400 integrations between SITS and Moodle. Um, and we'd really like to see if there's anyone out there who's interested in um, you know, joining, joining us on a journey to make a really nice Moodle SITS integration that's API based, that the whole community could use. Um, and I guess that ties in with generally releasing this uh, rollover plugin. I think you know, we're generally really keen to release these, uh, but at the moment it's really tied in with our data integration, um, which is not very nice in some aspects. Um, um, but, um, but if we can have a really nice standardized SITS integration and then that integrates with this, then that, that could also be a tool that benefits more widely. Uh, any questions? Thank you very much. First question here from Marty Dolberg. So I mean, I have thousands of questions, but obviously I can't ask them. But the one thing I'm curious about um, is the OU date report. What modifications have you made and is it available to other people? So the short answer of that is, I don't know because I was on holiday when it was made. <laughs> uh, and they were, they were mostly hacky ways of changing, uh, but we obviously looking at Moodle 4 at the moment, and all of those hackies ways of changing will hopefully be uh, contributions to the official plugin that we can upstream. Um, I need to speak to Tim at some point, I guess. Thanks. You are copying uh, uh, course content to the, uh, to the new uh, annuality without uh, user activity. Uh, you mean uh, like a backup and restore or something more? I mean, backup and restore doesn't copy um, mm, uh, teacher glossaries and wiki pages. Um, uh, teachers uh, ask for them. <laughs> So um, if I understand your question, you're asking if we do like a backup and restore with clearing all the data. So we do, but we don't. So backup and restore, and then there's a reset process. Uh, there is a configuration page for the tool that's there where we can exclude some things from there. So for example, we don't include glossaries and databases. So these are the content is copied over. And then in the guidance I showed earlier on the wiki, we tell them if you want that cleared, if you don't want a, a, an empty glossary, you just duplicate it and delete the old, old ones. So 
And that granularity goes on to groups as well. We can co carry on groups over. They don't get deleted so that all the groups are there ready to be added in there. Uh, but again, it's like it depends on you know the, the needs, but yeah. Oh, hold on just a second. <laughs> Do you say that the microphones that we have? So probably the key is uh, uh, to perform the reset, excluding some uh, some models, and then the backup. That's uh, the key to. Uh, no, it's backed up, restored, and then some elements reset. Yeah. Uh, have you taken into the consideration the growth of uh, database tables now that all the courses are being kept in one single Moodle? Because if you reset it every year, you have a for one year long <laughs> database tables. Now you'll have it for seven or eight years. Yeah, I mean, the, the size of our database is quite large, but the, the bulk of it is the log table. Um, We've got 100, well, I think it's probably 300 gigs at this point of, of logs. That's where the, the storage is. The other tables, um, you know, it's a few gigs. I'm not really concerned about that. Um, and we're all in AWS and scalable and rewrite splitting and all that stuff. So our, our, one of the things with the, the, the rollovers, we saw if there's a lot of rollovers happening at a particular time, it might have an impact on the database and, and the load of the system, and we want to cap it and ensure it doesn't have effect system performance. So it uses all of the Moodle scheduled tasks uh, and ad hoc tasks. So it only does three at a time, or if we could do more if we really needed to, but it, it, it uses all, of our, all the good stuff in, in Core Moodle to, um, to manage the load. And it happens basically, hence why it sends an email when it's done, rather than telling you it's going to be done in five minutes. I think we do have time for one more question. Hello, thank you. Um, I wanted to know if, um, if the plugins you had developed um, are available for everyone. Um, so that's what I was saying. The, uh, at the moment, they're not published. We're quite happy to share and, and maybe have a discussion um, because the first three weeks of development will work for anyone because um, it, it, it is just backup, restore, and a, a target of a category anyway in Moodle. Pretty much everything after that has been really tied to our data integration and where we store in specific internal plugins our, our data integration. Um, so that stuff probably wouldn't work for you, but you could probably rip it out and tie it to your own uh, data integration. But you're happy to share it and talk. 